Hey, what's up, world? It's your boy Marquise, bringing you another spectacular show of College 101. This guy I'm about to interview is hella funny. He's a comedian. You may have seen him on BET's Comic View and Next Friday. He is none other than Michael Blackson. How you doing, Michael? What's up, mother sucker? What's up? Uh, yeah, I forgot. He's the he's the the man or the mother sucker quote. So, <laughs> so he got he got that down pack. He got that down pack. Now, my, I want to start off by asking you, how does it feel to be called one of the most original? comedians in the country. Uh, it's, it's a good feeling, man, you know. I came a long way, I'm not from this country. Born in West Africa, you know, came to the States, you know, and in this wonderful country where it's a big land of opportunity, you can become whatever you want to be. And God given this talent of comedy and, you know. You know it's, a, it's a blessing. And, you know, since I'm different, I definitely consider myself the original, the, or, I mean, I'm probably the only African comedian that's doing it in the States, you know, plus I'm different than everybody else. And if you don't remember my name, you're going to at least remember Mother Soka. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'll give him something to remember, you know. Speaking of that Mother Soka, how, did, how, when, and did you come in with that? Like, because that's, that's your stamp right there. Everybody yeah. knows you about the Mother Soka thing. <laughs> right, you can't steal that. Well, it, it was on, I was doing Comic View back in, like, 98. And I had this joke, and I put to use an MF. I'm like, I can't, this, you can't say MF oh, yeah, on yeah, Comic yeah, View. So yeah. I was like, Mother Soka, Mother Soka. Mother Soka. Yeah. That, so that, that's how it's, you know, I started up in 1998. Okay. So 11 years I've been saying Mother Soka. So. so who inspired you? Uh, Eddie Murphy definitely was the first person I seen. You know, I could, when I came to the States, I missed the Richard Pryor era. And I know Richard Pryor was probably one of the greatest ones. But when I came, I, Eddie was the first one I saw, and I thought he was so funny. You know, I liked like Raw, and I liked this when he had other one called Delirious. So I started watching Eddie, and he really inspired me to, you know. Do you remember which show? Was it one of the shows he was in the red outfit? I think that's the only well, the red outfit was, was Delirious. Okay. Like, I think I was, I was watching on cable, and I saw Raw. Raw was the one he's in, like, the purple or whatever. Mm -hmm. That was the first one I seen. So when I saw that, I wanted to watch more about him. So I started going to this video store and finding okay. more Eddie, and I saw the one in the red. I was delirious. Okay. So Eddie Murphy was definitely, you know, the one that inspired me. To okay. Do. Well, I did my research, and I, I know you um, got your start in 1992 in some clubs in uh, Philadelphia. Yes. How was that? Like, uh, uh, were was, you nervous? Just oh, I was nervous, man. And right now, I'm still nervous. I'm nervous if I go on stage. It's a good thing. It's more like anxious, nervous, can't wait to get up there, you know. But your first time gonna really determine if this is really for you or okay. not. And the first time I went on stage, yeah, I was nervous, and of course you'll forget a couple of your material, that it was a stage presence. I had yeah. a stage presence, and I was able to deliver, deliver a joke. Yeah. And once you could do that, you know what I mean? I knew I was ready for, you know, to be a stand-up comedian. You know, so what I did, I kept going to open mic. That's where you start off open mic night. Every comedy club in the country has an open mic. That's when yeah. anybody could sign up. So yeah. I just kept going every week and developed in my act. And then a couple of years later, BT came to Philly and it was going across the country looking for acts, and that's how they found me. So. Tell me about your experience with BT. How was that? Uh, I can't give much love to BT. I mean, they don't pay a lot of money. And <laughs> he, uh, every show you say, uh, hey, I need my money first. My money first <laughs> you know what I mean? That's from BT, but BT, did, I mean, they made me, they blew me up. You know, even though next Friday really made me bigger. But BET gave me my first e exposure and I'll be a stuff eight million times and make you a star. So much love to BET. So they can keep the money to owe me. They made me a star. I'm good when I saw God. I know when you're an artist, singer or rapper, you get signed. Does it work the same way with comedians? And kind of. You get, I mean, you get sometimes you get signed to an agent. Okay. You know, um, it depends when, like, a lot of the comedians that made it big time got signed when they did Def Comedy Jam back in the day. I mean, it's not it's not that it's not the same way nowadays. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, I mean, like I'm currently not signed to anybody. I've been doing my thing for so long, yeah. and I'm so different that I don't get in work. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They wanna find me, they Google me up, and they'll get me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I guess technically I'm not signing. You know? So who would you say found you? Well, yeah, I mean, of course, BT gave me a break, and then one night I was performing in LA at a comedy club, and it was the night two came to check out Mike. Oh, that was the first time I checked out Mike S, and I just had performing that same night, and he liked my acts. So the lady that booked the show let him come and read a come and audition for next Friday, and that's how it happened. <laughs> What it do, people? I'm standing backstage. Michael Blackson is on the stage right now. He's bringing a live show. It's funny, and I know you can hear the crowd laughing right now. I wish y'all can be here, man, but I want to give some more commentary from him later on. Stay tuned. I'm going to let y'all see what's going on right here. I'm going to let y'all see what's going on.
We backstage. I know you're from Africa, so I know there's a different type of music over there in Africa. Who are your favorite artists? Like, what is what kind of music is in your CD player right now? Oh, I got this um, this one guy named uh, Gawu. He's a, he's an Ivorian singer from the Ivory Coast. I got this South African singer. She actually recently, uh, I think it's Brenda Fasi. Fasu is her name. She just passed away in, like a couple of years ago. Uh, let me see who else I got in my sheet. Damn it. I don't remember. Those are the really the ones I, you know, Jay Z, Ti, of course, and Fifty's my man. But I, I don't have his really? latest album. Okay. I like Fifty. So you feeling Lil Wayne with his? Uh, oh yeah, his, Wayne. Of course. You know, he's Lil going Wayne. with the. He's going with the rocks. Uh, thing. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I, I forgot, but I got Wayne in my car, so that's who I forgot. That's who I can think of. Mm -hmm. Pick your sexiest female rapper, mm -hmm. uh, actress, and singer. Who's your top on the top? I like my women thick. Uh, sexiest singer. I gotta go with Beyonce. Sexiest actress. I go with Ava Mendez, sexiest yeah. female rapper. I gotta go with my girl Trina. What do you think about the economy situation right now? Ah, uh, you know what? It's it, that whole recession thing. Is I think it's in your mind. If you feel like you broke, nigga, you broke. <laughs> when I saw God, that's how I look at it as. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a mental thing. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, if you you still live in the same house and you you still have the same job, you're okay. Of course, Apple lost their jobs, and Obama is doing a great job. I love what he's doing, how he's trying to get the economy back and get money back into our pocket. I definitely am feeling our president. Love him to death. So I think everything's gonna be okay as long as Obama is there. First lady looks pretty good herself too. First. Yeah, yeah, she looks good. I mean, I know she hugged it. The, she hugged that lady in England and this. Oh, uh, the queen. Yeah. yeah queen. If, if if somebody hugged me, I'm gonna hug them back. Yeah, they was talking about how Obama put it like one arm or something around her, and they, it wasn't right. But you know how people. Who the hell talk? That they shit, gonna, they shit, gonna man, talk. Right, we ain't go to no England school of England yeah. not to touch a queen. Yeah, I, I don't know what the, the problem is. But, right. but one last question: mm -hmm. What other projects are you working on? Movies? Oh, CDs, definitely, man. Shows? First of all, I did my first movie, my own movie. It's going straight to DVD. It'll be out probably late this summer. It's called Mutumbo. Bo, look out for this movie. It's a movie about my parents they didn't want me and it sold me to a drug dealer, like a slave. Really? It's a comedy. Okay. It's just ridiculously comedy. I'm also in another Master P project called The Little Male Man. It stars me, Master P, and um, Tony Cox. That's a little major guy. I know Tony yeah. Cox. And I, I got a bunch of other little DVD movies be out there. But Mutumbo and, of course, The Little Male Man is what to look forward to. Okay, you got a MySpace page? You want I got to a MySpace. My first thing, my website, michaelblackson.com. Of course, my space slash Michael Blackson. I'm also on Facebook. Look up Michael Blackson. Hit me up anytime. I return all my own emails. Michael Blackson at Hotmail. That's my fan's email, and I re return all of them. So feel free to hit me up, you motherfucker. Right, you get your jig with College 101, Southern University of Mississippi. Yeah. It's going down, you motherfucker. <laughs>